Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today we're checking out the Engui P20. As always, if you'd like to pick it up, you can find a link down below and this will also support my channel. Please note this product was sent to me for free for review. Now I've been pretty excited to check out this bike as it's very different to the rest of Engui's lineup, mainly being it's smaller and lighter. Most of Engui's bikes have fat tires and a huge bulky frame. So uh, getting to use this one has been a very a uh, nice different experience to share with you guys. And I do think this is probably gonna be one of Engui's best sellers because I think it's gonna probably appeal to more people. Now, because it has a light foldable design, you are gonna have some trade-offs, like for example, no suspension. And I can already hear some people saying, it's a city bike, it doesn't need suspension. Well, it depends obviously how you're going to be using it. If you've been on UK roads, you, you know you definitely do still need suspension. Um, if you're gonna be just riding this on bicycle footpaths, then you know it may be a bit more comfortable. But anyway, we're gonna be testing all of this out, see what some of the shortcomings are of having this lighter design and what some of the pros are too. Let's take a look at some of the specs and features of this e-bike. So it has a total weight of 18.5 kilos, has 20 inch tires, hydraulic disc brakes, a maximum rated range of 16 miles. It's also foldable, has a decent amount of torque and will charge in about five hours. So although this bike is lighter than a lot of other Engui's bikes, I still wouldn't say it's easy and comfortable to fold. And that's probably gonna be pretty hard to achieve in an e-bike to be honest anyway, because the batteries make up a lot of the weight. Um, and this one does have a decent frame, uh, a sturdy feeling frame. So it doesn't feel light and cheap. And that's obviously gonna add some weight too. Um, but if I spin this around and show you, um, we can fold the pedals. They are plastic pedals. Um, I would have preferred metal. And I have heard stories of people having these plastic foldable pedals like these break on them. So that can be a bit of a downside, bear that in mind. You have a clip here in the center, which lets you fold the bike. Um, and then if I spin this around, you'll see there's two metal contact points. Um, that There's a big magnet here. And I need to get the, you can see it's slightly awkward. Now I'm sure as you got bare at this, you would probably get a bit of a knack for doing it. But there's a magnet here um, that kind of help locks the bike together. And you can walk it along on both of its wheels like this but you still have the handlebars here. Now, unless I have the positioning of these handlebars slightly wrong, the problem is if you fold these handlebars down all the way, you can see something's always kind of slightly in the way when you're folding. If I fold these all the way down, they are now in the way of that magnet, so you can't actually fully close it and the pedal also gets in the way as well. Um, but it's definitely gonna be a nice feature for a lot of people folding this. This will fit in the boot of my car easily. And because it folds, if it didn't fold, then this would not go in the boot of my car. So a really nice feature. Let's do a little test. Let's move back from the camera. So hopefully we'll get this in frame. Um, let's see how heavy this thing actually is. Can I lift it above my head? Now I've done this with other bikes, but uh, I'm sure this one is probably going to be easier. So as you can see, it's definitely not light, but you can lift this up. I wouldn't say comfortably, but in a pinch, if you had to lift this over something, um, it's definitely better than some of the other Engui bikes that I've tested that are like 30 kilos. I am just under 5'11" and this bike has quite a lot of adjustment range in it. You can see I have it um, pretty low here and I can still kind of get on my tiptoes a little bit. The seat has a quick adjustment, so you can put this really high, so high that I couldn't actually get on it. So if you're quite tall, I think this is gonna have quite a wide range um, of heights that people are gonna be able to use this with. Um, you can also adjust the handlebars and they have a lot of range you can adjust them up and down too. So not only based on your height, if you like having the handlebars high or low, you do have quite a lot of adjustment here you can play around with as well to get it just how you like it. This is using quite a thin lightweight seat, which in my opinion doesn't make it super comfortable, 
um, but it's definitely not bad. My girlfriend was riding this bike and she said she actually really liked the seat. So this is probably going to be a personal preference. Um, a little bit of uh, more padding I think would have been nice, um, but it's definitely not uncomfortable. The battery is very easy to access. You don't have to remove the seat or anything like that. Simply putting the key in and turning it will make it pop out. And you just pull it out from the frame. When you want to put it back in, you simply just do the reverse, push it, and you get a nice little satisfying click, and then you know it's securely in place. On the sides, you have a little uh, piece of rubber which hides the on and off switch. And then on the opposite side, you also have another one which hides the charging port. And you can, of course, charge this while it's in the bike as well. On the handlebars, we have our small control panel. We also have our indicator lights, which are on the back. We have a bell, which you don't have to attach if you don't want to, and a small thumb throttle. Would have preferred a twist throttle, but this works nonetheless. This bike has built-in front and rear lights, including indicators. The lights are using the main battery of the bike, so you don't need to mess around with individual batteries. The brake lights also light up whether they're turned off or on when you brake. And the indicator lights are built into the same little unit of the brake lights. And um, I'm not sure I'd really ever use them myself, but there's no indication on the actual controller that you're using that you have the indicators turned on. I think this is a really bad um, user experience and a lot of people are probably going to use these and forget um, and leave them on and someone will think they're turning a corner. So I think this is pretty bad design when it comes to the user experience in the controller. So I'm sorry if this is not very clear. This is quite a small screen and it's hard to film. Um, but I'll run you through the settings and also more importantly how to de-restrict this bike. So um, you have your bottom controls here which change through your pedal assist modes. On zero you'll get no pedal assist and then from one two and three you'll get increasing pedal assist as you turn it up. This bike is in walk mode by default so if you press the throttle um, you'll see this come up on the screen and the bike will move forwards slowly at a walking pace. You can also hold up on these controls here to turn on your lights and the screen will dim slightly. Hold it again to turn it off. You have your mode button here as well. Average speed, your max speed and the, and the current trip. Swipe that data so we're back to normal. Of course you have your power button on the top here. Hold that to turn this bike off. Hold it to turn the bike on. And the first 10 seconds the bike is turned on, if you hold the mode button, you'll get into the setting screen. You have to do this within the first 10 seconds of powering on the bike. Use the bottom buttons to scroll up and down. Um, we'll go on to unit here by pressing the M button. And then we can go up or down to change this to kilometers an hour to miles per hour. More importantly, I'll show you how to unlock the throttle so you've got full uh, electric mode so i'm not exactly sure how long you do this for as there's no confirmation and i didn't see any guides online but if you hold up um, at the bottom here for about 10 to 15 seconds um, you don't seem to get any confirmation message on the screen but this will unlock the full electric mode and you'll get full speed with the thumb throttle So I'll let go of that now, I'll go back up to exit, go back to the main screen, make sure it's in at least uh, pedal assist mode 1 or above. Now if I press the throttle, um, it's not going into uh, the walk assist mode. Obviously I have the bike stationary here so I can't really show you it um, whizzing around. Two very important features I've just realized I haven't even talked about yet is the torque sensor and the carbon belt. So the carbon belt replaces the traditional metal chain and it has quite a few advantages, one being it's lighter, it's also very low maintenance, some suggest you can get 10,000 miles um, almost maintenance free, but you will obviously need to check it for damage now and again. It's also very quiet because unlike a heavy metal chain, it's very tight and doesn't really bounce around and move around much when you're riding, so that's something you'll definitely notice when you're riding this bike, it's how quiet it is and that's one of the main reasons. Also, this has a torque sensor, which means the bike will match your power output when you're pedaling. 
Now on this bike, I did find it very smooth overall, but you still feel a slight delay when you first start pedaling, which I really wish they could um, narrow down and make it a little bit more snappier. But please don't think I'm saying it's sluggish, but you do notice the motor kick in kind of like a second after you start pedaling. But me being picky, it would be cool if it did snap in a little bit faster. But my girlfriend did ride this bike as well, and she's not really someone experienced with e-bikes, and she said it felt very smooth and very nice to use. And of course, you can flick between your pedal assist settings to get a little bit more power, going up to power assist level three. If you are going to be using pedal assist a lot, I highly recommend getting a bike like this one with a torque sensor, and definitely don't buy one that doesn't have a torque sensor, as the experience is just really not as good and um, feels quite clunky to use in a lot of e-bikes I've used, not all of them, but most of them. I think some seat suspension would have been nice in this bike, just to add a little bit of cushioning, and I don't really think it would have added that much weight. Um, of course, this bike isn't designed to be used off-road. There is actually a sticker on it um, that I think I peeled off on the side that says, obviously, don't use this bike for serious off-roading because you'll break the frame. But uh, having some really light off-roading like this is always nice to sort of push this bike to the edge of its limits a little bit more and see how it feels. And obviously I'm not gonna go fast because I don't wanna damage or break the bike. Um, but riding down here, if you go slowly, the experience is not that bad on light off-roading like this. Um, the tires are obviously gonna absorb some of the bumps. So if you're riding this and you need to do a little bit of light off-roading, um, it's not too bad. But that lack of suspension, obviously to save weight, um, is going to make this quite uncomfortable if your trip is quite bumpy. Um, but you probably will develop some callus when you're behind, so maybe you'll be okay. I don't know. Unless you're new here, you'll know that I like to test e-bikes in their full electric mode. And I like riding e-bikes this way. And I also think it's good to push them to their limits and see how long you can get them riding them this style and how long the battery lasts. So I will be showing with you how many miles I got doing this. And the acceleration of this bike was quite good. It did surprise me at first. I did get used to it after a while. The top speed I was able to get was 19 miles per hour. And as you'll see here, I was quite impressed with the hydraulic disc brakes as well. Um, they felt a lot better than a lot of other Engwe bikes I've tested. Some of them, of course, had mechanical disc brakes. So the brakes on this, since they're a hydraulic, um, they feel really nice and stiff and responsive. So if you are worried about a smaller bike like this having decent brakes, I don't think you'll be disappointed with these. So my total miles is 12.7 and it's showing two bars. But when I was riding the bike, it was alternating between two and no bars on the screen and flashing. So it was kind of like going back and forth. So obviously I don't really want to completely deplete the battery because um, it uh, can be bad for its health. So 12.7 miles, that was uh, my total distance, fully electric on a full charge. So I'll be honest, I was hoping for a little bit more range than that, but I think 13 miles is very respectable for an e-bike of this size. Um, this would get me to my local gym and back, which is normally about a 25, 30 minute round trip. So quite impressive really. Um, and I think for most people, this sort of range will be enough for uh, most of you. And obviously if you're using the pedal assist um, as well, not using full electric like this, um, I would say you should comfortably get maybe double the distance if you baby it a bit. Um, so of course you can get a lot further on this if you need to, but fully electric, um, worst case scenario, it looks like you'll get about 12 to 13 miles, but even then you do have to consider that this can change based on if you're riding up a lot of hills, um, the weather, etc. Um, so always use um, these range guides on e-bike videos as a really rough estimate. They're not going to be exact and nowhere near it. 
Let's talk about some small things I didn't like about this bike or I think can be improved. First of all would be the indicators on this bike. You'll notice I've barely really talked about them. That's because I didn't use them and I didn't really personally think they would be that useful. And there's one big downside I think from a user experience standpoint which is um, very badly designed by Engui or maybe they just wasn't able to incorporate this into the controller as a lot of them seem off the shelf. If you turn on the indicators there's no message on the controller that they're on, there's no audio, there's, there's nothing telling you that the indicator's on besides you basically looking back and checking yourself and the problem with this is you'll know if you're a driver people often do this in cars they turn their indicator on and they forget and in a car you have an audible noise of the indicator and a flash light on the heads up display and sometimes people still forget and leave it on there's none of that on this e-bike so you could potentially leave your indicators on and cause quite a dangerous situation if someone thinks you're turning but you're not so i think this is probably one of the biggest problems with this e-bike quite small you could of course just choose not to use them like i did but worth bearing in mind i would also like to see engui improve their controllers as I mentioned, um, they just seem very similar to a lot of other e-bikes and they don't really stand out in any way. I would like to see app support as there are some bikes coming out now that are on the kind of budget side and have app support built into them. Hopefully I'll be re reviewing some soon. Um, I've had some offers, but I'm just waiting for them to arrive. Something else you should bear in mind when purchasing an e-bike is of course they will require some maintenance, but the battery that's used in the e-bike is also very important in terms of how long it will last. And Engui don't tell you the brand of cell that's being used in this bike, so I can only assume that it's not a branded cell. A lot of people seem to recommend Samsung. I've had a friend recommend Panasonic and he's had good experience with their cells. Um, but not knowing what cell is in the battery is a little bit of a downside because you're not as confident as how long it's going to last. And we do offer a 12 month warranty, but this is something worth bearing in mind if you're um, potentially gonna have this bike for a very long period of time. So I hope in future, Engui release more e-bikes with branded cells, like Samsung cells, um, which they have in one of their other e-bikes that I reviewed before. Overall, I think Engui have made quite a good product. It's quite well-rounded, has a few little rough edges here and there, but overall, I think it's a pretty solid product at a reasonable price and offers some quite high-end features like the hydraulic disc brakes, your torque sensor, and overall quite a premium feeling design. But as always, I do recommend you get a second opinion, watch multiple reviews, especially when you're going to be purchasing quite an expensive product like this one, and just know exactly what you're purchasing first. I really hope you enjoyed the video guys and you found this review helpful. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are thinking of purchasing this product, you can use my link down below if you'd also like to support my channel. And please consider subscribing if you're new here. I will see you in the next video.